Welcome back to Rave Cartography. We're going to take a look at our collective abstract channels today. And it's my favorite part of all the channels because this is the one area where I have a lot of conscious access to what this is like. I can be a spokesperson for the abstract circuitry because this is where my sun shines. If you have a channel, we consider you to be abstract. Okay, you will either be conscious or unconscious. Unconscious if it's red or partially red, or you're conscious of it if it's all black. What I want to give to you guys now is a recognition, your own recognition about why you are either on time or not, <laughs> because it's coming from the time pressures in your circuitry. So last week we took a look at the logical time pressure. That's about being punctual. I have to be there exactly on time. There's a rhythm and a flow to life's existence. And if you're logical, you do your best to be punctual. So exactly on time. Those of us who are abstract, what happens is we get all upset if we can't get there early <laughs> because we might miss out on something. There's an expectation that, it to, for me, I, I recognize this in my life, my whole life, if I don't get there early, I'm not on time. That's not on time for me. Whereas a logical person, no, I skid it in by the skin of my teeth right on time, I'm on time. But if I'm on time for me, it feels like I'm late because I'm part of the abstract time pressure because there's an expectation that is there. And one of the secrets we're gonna learn about today with abstract people, the sensing circuit, is to release the expectation that makes for a more um, easier we could say, experience of life. Now with individual time pressure, it's all about the now. All time is now, and there usually isn't any patience there. We all who are individual, I'm unconsciously individual, want it now. And there's a melancholy that's there. If we can't have it now, if nothing new is happening, nothing new is happening, we want energy to move, we want to shift, we feel limited, we feel stuck, and we can't have it now, there's that sadness that might rear its head. And so it's, these are people who are you know, not really necessarily on time. It's like, oh, I'm gonna get there at the right time for me. Oh, now it's the time for me to be there. I'm there, it's now. I don't care if I'm early or if I'm late. <laughs> so that's where that's coming from. Now the tribal time pressure is about ritual and pomp and circumstances. It's about the tribal way of doing things like, okay, every Sunday at nine o'clock, we all come together to worship. It's timeless. And the best way I uh, remember timelessness of the tribal time pressure is that imagine somebody killed your cousin or your sister or your brother or anybody that's related to you. Are you ever gonna forgive that other person? Just think of like, you know, the primal tribal, will the, will the group itself forgive? Or will they always remember? They'll, it's timeless. It's like, no, this is, this is something that really sticks. Remember the tribe is very sticky. Yeah, it's, what, it's the glue that keeps us together as us versus them. So there's this timelessness, um, this ancient, ancient memory with the tribe that they want to bring that forward into the future. So timelessness is the time pressure. So I'm hopeful that this helps you understand your design. Take a look at your design, see are you maybe consciously one thing and unconsciously the other? And do you recognize if you're consciously one thing, like I'm abstract, I can recognize that this is what I wanna do. I always wanna get there early from my mind's process. I desire to get there early so I don't miss out. And yet the individual, my body, which is all unconscious, my body um, channel, the one unconscious channel that I have, is about now, have, wanting things now, and not about the patience of the emotional system where my conscious activations are. So I like to put this picture in with the sensing circuit because it's goofy and it's silly and it doesn't make sense, and yet all of us who are abstract sensing circuit, the experiential, we're all called this, 4130, 36, 35, the human experiential way. Called it the human experiential way because this is about imagination and then the experience itself. And we can't necessarily make sense of it. We can't make sense of it until we come to the end of the experience where we've made progress or not, to where we remember the experience, where we share what we remembered, then the lesson or the moral of the story that fosters faith and hope and belief. So 
those of you who have a sensing circuit strength or channel in your body graph, look down, are you sensing? Then you, your process of life is about instilling faith and hope and belief. It's not about the logic and the empirical data. It's not the dry, hard facts and the safety, security, and the spontaneous awareness. No, this is a process. This is a journey. So all of these channels have a sensation of feeling to them and emotionality to them, even though they're not connected up to this emotional system. I'll say that again. If you look up, especially here, 1156, the 6447, those are particularly, this is the emotional mind, particularly connected up to that emotionality or sensing, because this is a stream of sensing, sensing about the past experience. All of this is about the past experience and processing that, going on a journey, a cycle that has clear, defined, not limitations, but um, processes where it's about a beginning, something starts, a middle of the journey and the end of the journey. So especially for those of us who are abstract, we have to let this process organically evolve instead of trying to force things. Here's a great silly example. You're born, you live life, and you die. Now, do you want to just skip to the end? No, not necessarily. Or if you're reading a book, you know, you begin the book, and then you're like, well, I really want to happen, know what happens at the end. I can't stand this anymore. I'm just going to skip to the end. Are you going to do that? I did that as a kid. It's not very fulfilling, is it? So the sensing circuit has a process. It has a time process that is deeply connected up to our ability to let go of the expectations. And yet this whole emotional wave, as we learned about, is built on this wave of the slow, long build of expectation and then there's a crash. That's what the frequency of this emotionality is about. The deepest place where we have m the most existential or in the now kind of process, the, the process of discovery, you know, succeeding where others fail and failing where others succeed, that channel of discovery, that one is the most in this moment. But it has to be asked, all of this has to be asked and it all needs to go on the journey because the journey is the life. So the journey of the experience, the sensing, the seeing, the spirit, remember spirit, left eye, 11, gate 11, the gate of peace. Now take a look at this as a process of discovery. What do we have here? Let me get my pen. What do we have here as far as numbers of channels, or sorry, gates within the aspect that is about mind or is about form or is about the relationship or is about mutation and transformation. So the thing that sticks out to me the most is that we only have two mutation transformation traits or gates here in the sensing circuit. One of them is really important. There's that start codon in our genetics. At the start of every genetic sentence, we have a 41. So we have the pressure to imagine, to want to feel things deeply in order to learn. There's my son, where the feelings are what we are going for in the experience, not necessarily the experience in itself. The experience begins with a crisis of inexperience. Okay, so we have the imagination, the desire, and the ability to go on that experience, that journey. And feelings are transitory, channel of transitoriness. Yeah, design of a jack of all trades. And what are we going on this experiential? Here's the human experiential way. What are we going on this journey for? Growth. And here's the gate of endings. In order to have growth, we have to have the end of a cycle of experience. And that's all over here. So one, two, only three in the process of the quarter of initiation, purpose fulfilled through mind. Now down here we have our purposes fulfilled through form, progress in the throat center. Yeah, progress, change. The expectation of what the experience will bring is never exactly what we imagine it to be. Because by the time we have finished that imagination, that desire, that feeling, that longing, that burning, gate 30 is fire over fire, desire, 
Once we've fulfilled that desire, we're off to the next imagination of a new experience because this isn't fulfilling anymore. This trait, mm, these traits, the human experiential way, the abstract sensing circuitry, this is the stream of feeling. Once we've felt something, it's off to the next. It's this empty full, like the um, everything is in the emotional system. So that empty full leads us to want to go to a new beginning. And there's the gate of starting new things. <laughs> and once we've had, why do we go on these new beginnings? So that we have a tail, 56, the voice of I believe and I'm stimulating you with my story of what happened. Here's my version of it, because remember, this is the emotional, so it's very subjective. It's not cold, hard, dry facts. It's not logical. It's not punctual. It is all over the map, and it's designed to foster in you a moral, moral of the story, a belief, a faith, a hope. And why do we do that? Because we have a stop codon. Both of these are stop codons, the 33 and the 56. Because in order for all of us to learn as humans, we need to share the experience, the story, the journey. The journey is what shares our memory, part of the memory circuit, so that we don't have to all make the mistakes ourselves. And as we move through this, we need to remember that as beings, we need to wait for that commitment to the journey. Because if you're not committed to the journey, what are you going to do? Quit because it's too hard. <laughs> it's not meaningful. It's not valuable to you and your process. And we have to be asked, all of you, with Gate 29, even in an undefined center, there has to be an asking of your life force, your vitality. If you're a manifester, you need to be able to be clear that this is where you're going to initiate and inform in order to impact. If you're a projector like me, you have to be asked. Otherwise, your rights and your boundaries get violated. You cannot be pressured upon. If you're a generator, obviously you need to have that asking so that you are aware of whether or not you have the energy to succeed where others fail, to be in the right place at the right time by, by committing to that journey, by going on that journey of discovery. And then what happens after we've had that journey? We come to, and over here, by the way, we entered into the quarter of duality, purpose fulfilled through bonding. That 29 is about the bond and the commitment of the journey with the other. And the 64 is about coming together with others in order to process the past experience. Why? Because there's this pressure and a confusion of wanting to understand or sense, make, have realizations about why this happened, the meaning of it all. So Interestingly, these two, 64 and 47, are right next to each other. That means they're very genetically similar. Okay, so there's a real deep, interesting um, process to our humanity that is about making sense of and coming to realization of why life hurts so much. This is where we have drama queens. Hi, used to be the drama queen of the world <laughs> before human design, because we have this experience that's deeply painful and we want to share it. All of this is about sharing, sharing our pain of our discoveries and our experience in this form, in this body, gate 46, gate of serendipity, gate of luck, the gate of love of the body being in the form. We love our human form and we love all forms that are houses or temples of the spirit. In your collective circuitry, your keynote of sharing, we're looking at one aspect that is logic, right? All of our logic and the crossover that happens. So that's oh, all about the future and all about the patterns. And today we're going to look at the past, the past experience. It wants change. All of this wants improvement because there's a dissatisfaction that is there. So all of this is abstract and all of this is about the experiential way of what it means to actually have the physical lived experience as opposed to experiment with logic and theory and patterns as they move forward into the future. So there's no heart center in either of this in this collective circuitry. So it's not about being the best or proving, although the collective always wants to improve and share its discoveries 
and improve upon the life experience for everyone, everyone. So remember, we have our understanding circuit and our sensing circuit. I like to think of it as skin of the body graph in that it holds everything together. You know, it's on the outside. It's holding or sandwiching all of these different aspects together. And most of this is projected. Two channels here that are generated, two channels here that are generated, one that is manifested, okay? So it's mostly projected. I gave you a brief overview looking at the rave mandala wheel. If you want to memorize anything, if you can remember nothing else, these are the channels that you, the names and the design of. No gates have a design of. The design of comes in when you have a gate opposite the harmonic gate and then we have channels. So we begin up here on this slide with the channel of abstraction, design of mental activity mixed with clarity. This is about the process of the journey and accepting our realizations of our felt sense about what we experienced or what happened. And then it moves over here. We want to share that light with others. We want to be able to, because we're insatiably curious and we're seeking and searching endlessly to have belief and faith and hope about humanity, that we have this expression of that belief, I believe, or the, the moral of the story, the end of the tale. Down here we have the beginning of the human experiential way again. We have the pressure to desire, and that's a gate of fantasy, dreams, <laughs> strength of dreaming over here, or the strength of imagination, where we can have this recognition, the focused energetic recognition. What are we recognizing? Feelings, imagination, what people desire. Yeah, recognizing what they desire. And then moving through that juicy emotional center where we have this ability to have that transitoriness and that design of the jack of all trades bring us the strength of the actual experience and having all kinds of experiences in our life process. Jack of all trades, transitoriness. Remember, feelings are transitory. They come and go. There's a hunger that is in this stream to experience things. But who's really the experiencer? Hi, those people. Over here, just imagination. And then in order to bring maturation, we have to have beginnings, middles, and ends. So this balanced and cyclic development is one of the format channels that makes that person more about these cycles, these evolutionary cycles of experience. I like to think of them as spirals rather than a circle, because if you're in a circle, you're stuck. You're not going anywhere. It's always about ev evolving and cycling and coming to the higher expression or the more deeper, you could say, profounder expression of what that journey can bring, the potential awareness and the process of discovery. We also have, again, channel of discovery, succeeding where others fail. Remember, all channels can also be this. On the opposite side, we have people who fail where others succeed. Why would they fail? Because they're not waiting. They're trying to initiate, perhaps. They're trying to make a difference, make an impact, rather than waiting for that absolute gut response that can lead them to on a process of discovery in the body. And then last but not least, we have the prodigal design of a witness, the person who is designed to be an authority from experience, not only their experience, but the experience others share with them when they listen to that person's secrets and they store that secret as genetic memory to be shared with the right people at the right time as a um, identity of somebody who is here to lead from the past. And a recognition of how we need to move or go moving forward as a human species.